Come to us, O gracious Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. O gracious Shepherd, come be among us. Be our guide, our stay, be our light, be our wisdom and our strength, and within us renew all the fire that is needed for the day. And gracious shepherd, renew the face of this earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Grace and peace be to you in abundance through the knowledge of, of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, did we fix the picture thing this time through? Yeah, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's hard to have a guest preacher who has his own pictures brought along. Here we are. Uh, this probably excessively intense human being is St. Mary Magdalene, probably one of the most famous humans at least amongst Christians, if one might ever imagine. Um, this is, I believe, a Syrian, Syrian Orthodox icon of her. And you probably noticed that, true to a good breakfast, she has an egg with her. Um, and, and she actually points to it. There is a reason for that. The Orthodox who never have forgotten anything because they just keep these things sacred and keep them with them. Um, there's multiple, actually, legends of St. Mary Magdalene as she stares at you intently. One of them is that when she, in the morning before the sun rose on the third day, as she went and made her way towards the tomb, she, um, she went there to mourn, says the Bible. Well, that wasn't done in isolation in those days. You didn't just sneak into the graveyard. You planned to meet people there, and some said that probably she had a snack with them, and the legend was that she brought a basket of eggs to share with those who would like join her in mourning, and maybe also as a bribe to those who might be there so they could roll away the stone so she might see the body of the Lord. Of course, that was done for them by the angels. And when she got there, there was no need for that anymore. And of course, the Lord has risen. And, it, and then, of course, the, the legend goes that upon seeing the grave empty uh, and upon meeting Jesus, her eggs had all turned red. And since that day, Eastern Orthodox people and Christians, on the day before Easter, have colored Easter eggs. Yeah. She, is, she is, you know, patron saint of many things, of course. She's patron saint of new members of the church. She's patron saint of hairdressers due to a, an episode in John 12. She is uh, patron saint of penitent cinders. She is patron saint of contemplative people, patron saint of people ridiculed for their piety, patron scenes of those who keep make perfumes, also from that place in John 12, patron saint of those who are facing temptation, patron saint of women, and patron saint of tanners. That red egg thing again. Uh, legend go on that she did run into Roman officials. In one legend, it's Felix. The governor in other legend, is it's, it is Tiberius himself. She was, in both cases, there with an egg in hand for some reason, but I'll get to that, to, plan, to ask for the removal of Pontius Pilate. She greeted him saying, Christ is risen. And then, of course, whoever it was that she was in front said, Christ is no, longer, no more risen than that egg in your hand is red. And she opened her hand, and guess what? The egg was red. And again, since that time, you and I, you know, they've given each other red eggs. <laughs> For Easter and said, 
hint at each other eggs with the words, Christ is risen. And the egg at some point became this, more, this thing that to, you know, to, to, to symbolize something hard, like a, like a tomb that was nonetheless was in it, keeping something very precious and very much life. Life that would transform into something that was unrecognizable if only you left it long, long enough to let God do what God does. Three days, and here came, came the word. The Lord is risen. He's risen indeed. Of course, she gets to be the first one to say that. Matter of fact, she gets to be the first sheep to use this morning's gospel lesson. She becomes the first sheep to hear the Lord's voice, the shepherd's voice. She don't have any idea whatsoever whom she's looking at. He says, Mary. He calls her by name. And there she is, Mary. She reacts to him and becomes the apostle to the apostles. The first one to carry, carry the good news. The Lord is risen. He's risen, risen indeed. Well, friends, this, this coloring of Easter egg stuff, you know, we, we've done this long. Did you have an Easter egg hunt, by the way? You did. I know you did. I mean, I read your bulletins, folks. I mean, <laughs> um, you know, I hope you read ours. We, we keep sharing information with each other and I keep being proud of you folks because you do so well. I hope you rejoice with our spirits as well. But anyway, so we had ours on, on Sunday right before worship service. We had, of course, somebody appointed to be the official bringer of the Easter eggs. So I had this lined up and I knew I was going to have about, oh, well, maybe a dozen kids if I was lucky. Well, what I didn't know that a bunch of other people felt really, 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 really generous. So I had multiple people bring bags, trash bags of Easter eggs. So I have 300 to 400 eggs and eight kids. <laughs> so I, I, I told the teenagers, just go put that, put that out there. And they came back after a bag and a half and said, there's still room out in, no room on the yard anymore if you still have eggs. And I said, go see the sanctuary. <laughs> And they did. Then I went into the fellowship hall and I looked at all those good people who had just had a nice big breakfast. And I said to them, and I quote, um, those who will not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall certainly not enter into it. You will now have a chance to act like children. <laughs> Besides, bending at the waist is good for you. And I have just watched you eat. So you go and hunt Easter eggs as if you were nine years old. And then I told the kids, just, just let them go first. They don't know what they're doing. You can go afterwards and, 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 and teach them. And this is how we did Easter morning <laughs> this year, a couple of three weeks ago it was. Um, just a beautiful, beautiful sight of seeing all these, these folks your own age rummaging around, you know, a churchyard. Then they discovered the sanctuary was seated too. <laughs> and there was just no end. After a while, it occurred to me that they were all getting sick of Easter eggs. They all had hands full. And they started giving them to each other, <laughs> pawning them off on each other, if you so will. So it, it became a moment where everyone was just blessed with all the Easter eggs they could stand. To the point where I think the, the gardener has come to see me and said, I found these. <laughs> yeah. But so it goes. Easter, St. Mary Magdalene. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And this egg, it's, it's kind of the symbol of it. And this, this, this hunting the eggs in the morning, this passing the eggs to one another, you know, it's a sign of, of just gracious and merciful abundance that only God can eventually come to bring. Uh, you don't just get multiple abundance through your own work. I, I understand. I've read, the, you, you've already read the second chapter of Acts. It's, it's, the, it's the, the speech of St. Peter, the sermon of St. Peter, the first one. Now, I've, you know, it's a pretty rough sermon, to be very honest. But it ends with 3,000 being gathered into the fellowship of the Lord Jesus Christ and into the fellowship of his resurrection because it very bluntly said, you, 
you have brought by your sin and by your short-sightedness, your blindness. You have brought the Lord Jesus, the Son of the Most Blessed, to the cross. But God meant it for good and raised him from the dead. And in him, generation that stands before me and generations to come, there shall be your salvation. 3,000 are added to their numbers. And they, as this morning's lesson was read, they devoted themselves to the to learning what the apostles had to teach, to gather together, to break bread, to pray with one another, to be filled with awe at the many wonders and signs that were done due to the teaching of the apostles. And that sounds like church to me, if you ask me. That's the beginning. I mean, when we read this, of course, what's coming next is probably what gets most of us kind of scratching our heads. But what they did is to gather themselves together to praise God, to learn all there is to know, all there is to be taught about this Jesus, this one that rose from the dead, about gathering together and, and sharing with each other all things, and especially the things that they had in common, which is Jesus, whose body and blood they still devoted themselves and have devoted themselves for years and years and years. And yes, on goes the lessons in Acts, and they held everything in common, selling their possessions and goods so that they had enough to share with one another. I know I'm paraphrasing, and I mean to. It's life, my friends, is provided greatly and magnificently magnificently by God. I hope and pray that you have noticed that. And I, I, I love my little story of Easter eggs because frankly, it was one of those moments to show the abundance of God himself. You know, I had nothing to do with having 300 some Easter eggs. They just happened. <laughs> but in moments like this, it's time to look at the sky and say thank you. Thank you. There's more here. I have more. I am more than I could dream or want or even ask. God provides. God provides greatly. Especially God provides grace for living. Grace for strength. Grace for life. Grace bestowed so richly that yes. Your back will start hurting if you have to pick it off from the ground. But it's placed into your open hand. Grace to share. Grace to be with others. To be the peace with others and for others. These are all, all given to those who gather themselves to the teaching of apostles. And I've been told that you are part of those. For certainly your 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 ideals as abiding Christ is to learn, to serve, to share, to go, to proclaim. Easter is such a, such a beautiful season. Maybe the egg is such a beautiful, beautiful icon of all that can be. A hard shell and an inside full of life, full of grace, full of a future none of us can pray for or dream, riches yet to be realized. As you gather, abide in Christ, do everything you can to be this place that St. Luke writes about, a place where they devote themselves to be learners of the word, doers of the word, to be people that are one in fellowship and in love, to be one, filled with awe, because in Jesus Christ and in his grace, many a wonder are always done. And to be one in utter and total trust as those who are following a shepherd through thick and thin that God will provide 
God always has provided. God is providing today and God will always, always provide for you. And yes, that same God has called your name, your name. And you were added to this number of those who came to be believers.